Hi and welcome to my shop. Hey, I'm going to go another step with this radio, or at least I'm going to try my best to go another step with this radio and align the FM IF uh, transformers, the two transformers that are in there. And again, I am trying to utilize my uh, SDR. I'm really trying to discover the secrets to using a radio like that to uh, look at signals that are present in the radio and uh, see if that doesn't assist with the alignment of the radio because of the visual quality of the SDR radio display, the uh, frequency spectrum display. So um, what I got going here is pretty simple. I've attached the antenna, the antenna right down here. <clears throat> this is the antenna lead from the SDR radio. I have a clip lead on the hot wire, if I can call it that, clipped through a capacitor to one terminal on what I hope is the secondary side of the final IF transformer. I know making this attachment may affect the uh, IF transformer, so I'm hoping to concentrate on the earlier IF transformer, although I know there, there's problems with that kind of thinking, but no reason to even get that far into it. Take a look at what's showing on the SDR radio here. Just one moment. Okay, so that's that's really good, and that's really bad, and that's really bad. So why do I mean by that? Well, first, it's really good. I can certainly see the uh, IF peak right around 10.7. That's good. Looks like the way I've got things connected, I can see something. Uh, number two, what's bad is the shape of that curve. It doesn't look good at all to me. Uh, it should be... Let me, let me put the red line right on 10.7. So the, the wave shape should be flat across the top out to 10.6 and, and 10.8, and it's certainly not. It's got a, an odd shape to it. It's kind of extending out to the right there. It's just not looking good at all. And the last bad, number three bad, is what is all that stuff out there to the right? Um, I've been poking around with this a bit before I turn the cameras on trying to get rid of it or figure out what it is, and I haven't, and it's curious. It's very curious stuff. Is this important for the operation of the radio? I'm not even sure. Is it just a ghostly thing coming from the SDR? I'm not really sure. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing here to try to sort this out. And you can join in the, the amazement and excitement. There we are. Okay. So just forgetting about the curve for a minute and looking at that weird stuff out around, it's around 11 megacycles. So I have another radio in here. I just remember which camera we're looking through. So let, let's listen to what's coming just out of the air at around 11. This is already tuned to 11 megacycles. Just tune around a bit. How does that happen? It doesn't sound at all like it did just before I turned on the video. <laughs> How can that be? How can that be? Okay, we'll go down around 10.7 here. So that's 10.7. So you're you're, you're hearing something coming, I believe, from the IF of this radio. Let me tune the signal generator a little bit back and forth, around 100 megacycles. The radio's tuned to 100 megacycles or so. Just hear what this, this radio sounds like. And you can watch the SDR, too, and see what's going on in the in tuning it. So I think the sudden release and the sudden start in the sound you hear in this radio is the automatic frequency control grabbing onto the uh, grabbing onto the signal I'm putting into it. Now, what you're seeing on the SDR right now, I have, I have no clue. <laughs> Where did that come from? Okay, let's tune 
for the uh, Now remember, there's a one second delay on the SDR, so you can hear things and then see them a second later. Tuning back towards 1 megahertz, or ten, 100 megahertz. So now uh, the uh, what's going on here is 100 megahertz is is uh, being deviated. If I can use that word, it's it's moving back and forth above and below 100 megahertz, and that's causing a similar signal in the IF moving back and forth around 10.7, something like that. So I think what we're seeing on the SDR right now is one edge of this travel, if you like. And since it's outside of the 10.7 IF range, we can't really hear it on either radio. Remember, we're listening to this one right now. We're not listening to this one. Let's go back through it again. I'm going to stop where I think 10.7 is. It's somewhere right around here, but I can find it now if I turn down the deviation on the signal generator. All it's going to put out then is just 100. 100. See one peak, I can swing into the 10.7 mark. Okay, so I have two radios telling me that the signal is at exactly 10.7. One is the SDR, and the other one is, is, is this little transistor radio, which is tuned to 10.7. And it's just picking this up in my shop out of the air. It's not picking up the signal generator, it's picking up signals coming out of this radio. Now, the signals coming out of this radio could be boosted because I have this wire connected here and all this wire here could be doing. If I, if I just, if I just, yeah, I'm showing you stuff and I'm not showing you. Wait a second, wrong camera. Very confused. Okay, so I, so I do have these clip leads coming out, maybe acting like antennas on the IF, so that maybe that's why there's 10.7 making it all the way up to my transistor radio. I'll just disconnect for a moment. It, it did make a difference. Big difference on the SDR. So what I'm thinking is right now I've got my signal generator tuned quite accurately to 10.7. Great. Now I'll increase the deviation so the 100 megahertz starts to Wobble, literally wobble. It's at 60 hertz. Is what it's doing this time. So now the deviation is set somewhere around 75 kilocycles. Unfortunately, my uh, indicating meter is no longer indicating anything. I'm going to turn down the transistor radio. Stop listening to that. So what is that stuff up there to the right? Which I'm still very curious about. So is it coming out of the radio I'm testing? Once again I'll disconnect the antenna lead to the SDR radio and see what happens to those spikes or peaks or whatever. Okay, so it seems to be coming from the radio. Now is it just, you know, it doesn't seem to be coming out of my shop generally. Let's go back on the radio. they are again. Now I'm going to turn the power off to this radio. It'll stop all the electronics from you know, amplifying and stuff like that. We'll see what happens to these to these signals. Here we go. Power gone. Now I got this far in my fiddling before I turned on the video, which I, I don't normally video video. <laughs> I don't normally fiddle with the video off. 
because you never know what you're going to find. And uh, once in a while, I'll, I'll miss something on video. I don't like that. So I usually have the cameras running almost 100% of the time, in fact. Well, there we are. So if I disconnect this wire again, so I'm disconnecting the SDR from the radio. The radio's off now. And those signals go away. So they're coming out of this radio without the radio connected to anything. Now, how can this be? Let me connect to the chassis here. Do we get the same thing? Oh, we kind of get the same thing. One of the things I haven't done is I haven't grounded the lead from the SDR to the chassis. And the reason I haven't done this is it didn't seem to be necessary. Maybe, maybe if I ground the lead, it's going to rid us of these mysterious kind of signals. It might boost the signal going into the SDR, which is why I was first connecting it without this ground connected. Okay, now the radio's not on, so there's not much signal coming out of it. So let's ground it. Well, that didn't seem to help at all, did it? Well, you know what? I've actually got this thing shorted. I've actually, what have I done? Look what I've done here. I've connected clip leads from... How can this be? Uh, this doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, let's go back to just hooking up one lead to the chassis here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the plug, the, the power plug. That's in the outlet over here. The outlet which is switched off. Let me uh, just pull it out here. It's out. Okay, so now the radio is not plugged into the wall, so to speak. It's not plugged into anything. In fact, it's never plugged in the wall here in my shop. It's plugged in through a isolation transformer. But that's unplugged now. So as far as I know, I got a hunk of metal here connected by a cable to a hunk of metal over here. And for some reason I get those signals. Could those be radio stations? Could those be radio stations coming in? Hey, we can listen to the SDR and find out. Maybe, you know, it is, looks like it's in a, well, here's the shortwave band up here. So these should not be, what are these? Okay, I'm on AM. Okay, now you're listening to the SDR radio. Well, maybe this is just a really extensive antenna, and with this much stuff connected to the radio, it picks up that that junk there. Let's let's see if I got more stuff. What more stuff have I got in here? I can just clip on as an antenna. I'll, do it. I'll just take a couple of clip leads here. So I basically have a longer wire. Just throw it around in here. Okay, we'll hook that up to the SDR. Wow, Let's see what we got here. Well, there's a little more on there, but there's nothing happening around 11 of any significance. The other thing I noticed too, that's totally flat looking now, flat across the whole display. Connect it to my radio. 
well, it still stays flat across the display. Never mind what I was saying about that. But there are those mystery signals. These really seem to have something to do with this radio. But the radio is not on. It's not plugged in the wall. What's it got for an antenna connection? The antenna connection amounts to nothing. There's no antenna connected to this guy. Doesn't doesn't mean it can't be picking stuff up on the antenna, but what would it matter? The antenna lead, but what would it matter? Radio's not even on. Holy smokes, man. Mysteries abound. Now, you know, maybe I can just ignore these signals and pretend they're not there and carry on with the IF alignment. But I am just too curious. I am too curious. I don't know what to do about it. Really. Uh, Well, I'm going to do something stupid here. I'm just going to kind of put a short right across the SDR antenna. They're still there. I'll take off the lead here. Wow, it's like there's something really strong coming out of this radio. So. wild conjecture. Let's see, I'm connected to a coil. Uh, the coil is a resonant coil. There's a capacitor paralleling it. It has a resonance, supposedly at 10.7. Uh, could it be its resonance? It's, uh, I, I, it's hard to believe, but I'll go with it. One of those coils is tuned so far off that it's made the coil itself sensitive to noise signals at around 11 megahertz. And that's why they're appearing radio on or not. No, that can't be because I've connected the radio, the SDR radio, the one we're watching, to the chassis here. The chassis. And those same guys show up. Okay, more long shots. What if I tune the radio? Not sure what those little bumps are in the. Uh... I don't see any difference at all. This is a wackadoodle idea anyway. Tuning a radio that's not turned on. Uh, change bands. Just do anything. Do something. signals come from? Well, you know, I can't figure out what they are. I'm going to have to just carry on and kind of pretend they're not there. I think that's the only way to go here. They are just above 10.7, just out of the range of the bandwidth of the IF, but not too far. Okay, let me switch on the radio here. For a radio that's not plugged in to come on. There we are, plugged in, switched on. This time we'll see something come up right around 10.7. Ooh, what was that? Oh, I've tuned the radio. I've tuned the radio off of 100. That's, we're waiting for something to appear that's not going to appear. Okay, so let me get the signal right at 10.7 in the IF here. That'll be my objective.
So I'm tuning the radio to match the output of the signal generator such that the IF starts running at 10.7. And it's not necessarily the right way to do it. I've been thinking about this. I think the right way to do it is to pick a frequency like, let's say, 100. That makes good sense because I have a signal generator that sticks pretty much to 100. Set the dial to exactly 100. Calculate what the local oscillator should be. Tune the local oscillator to that frequency. Then, um, that being done right, I think the 10.7 signal we're looking at should be right where it is now. But for now, for all I know, I'm not feeding in 100, I'm feeding in 100.01 or something. The IF is mistuned somewhere else. And yeah, I can combine those things to get the 10.7 to show up where it is, but it's not necessarily correct. As you see, I'm not feeding in a 10.7 signal into this radio. I'm feeding in a 100 megahertz signal into the antenna. I'm trying to fix things so that I know for sure a 10.7 signal is being presented to the IF. Uh, correctly. <laughs> Put that last word in correctly. Again, if we broaden this out, if I s increase the deviation here from basically zero to something, we can get a look at the curve. You know, it does kind of work its way up into that noise stuff, or you can see that noise stuff does come right down into the IF a little bit. The bandwidth, I think I can turn on the bandwidth. Gray zone, let me set this to 10.7. So the red line marks exactly where 10.7 is, and the, uh, where did the gray go? There we are. And the gray is marking the proper bandwidth of the IF. So everything outside that bandwidth, you should not hear anything from it. But anything inside there could present some problems at the far end of the radio. Now this is an FM radio, so it's not supposed to be sensitive to things that affect the signal strength coming into the radio, like those peaks. Those peaks should not generate a noise in the speaker. Uh, but that has a lot to do with the limiters that are in the radio, or the limiter that's in the radio, and how effective it is. Kind of pulsing a little bit there too. I can see it in the uh, waterfall display below. Lots of mysterious stuff. Boy, I tell you, that using the SDR has just popped my eyes open. I see, I see stuff I never saw before, but I see a lot more than I ever anticipated in doing this. I just did not imagine all this stuff would be here. I am testing a radio that's basically running completely. It's antenna's hooked up. I mean, the antenna, I shouldn't say the antenna's hooked up. It has no special antenna on it right now, but all that circuitry is, is running. I haven't I haven't stopped the local oscillator, I haven't shorted the inputs coming in, I haven't really done much of anything except look at it. And what's it sound like? Let's just turn this down here. noise peaks, but you know, how sure can I be here? You see, FM radio should not be sensitive to any modulation of the amplitude of the signal going into the antenna, but um, nothing is perfect, right? How did it get off 10.7? So let, let's try and set everything up for 100 megacycles. So 
So uh, first thing would be to make sure my signal generator is producing a 100 megacycle signal. I think I can use this radio up here to do that easily. Okay, so it's tuned to FM 100. It's <laughs> amazing. 100 exactly. How did that happen? Tune the output of the signal generator a bit. Let's turn, turn this down. So I'm watching the signal strength indicator on this meter on this radio, rather. So this thing has an FM frequency control, too, and I think it's kind of grabbing it. And And that's a hundred, and you know what? It's it's dead up on this control. This control down here. I'll take my axe man away. You can't quite see because of camera angles. Um, that's great. So it turns out that the control I'm turning here is calibrated perfectly, and when I have it set to 100, it really does produce 100. Now you can see the IF now is running at 10.8, which means the radio is not tuned. Tune the radio now. Okay, so the radio is now tuned such that the signal at the antenna is generating a 10.7, 10.7 um, signal in the IF. Now we can take a look at the frequency the radio is tuned to. way off. Not, not to look here. That's the AM band up here. So it's tuned to 101. It should be, and this is, let's see, 98. Well, it's quite a bit in here. 98. Oh, there's little marks. So the radio really should be 98, 99, 100. It should be a division plus a bit from where it is. It should be right there. So that tells me the local oscillator is off. Now, let's, let's go take a look at the actual local oscillator frequency. I think I can get it on the SDR. It should be 10.7 above 100. So it should be at 110.7. That's just, just off the FM band. Off the top of the FM band. 10. 110.7. So let's just shoot the SDR up there and see if there's something there to be found just the way it is now. 110. Oh. <laughs> what the heck is that? Okay, wait a minute. So we'll use the SDR to verify I'm at 100. Yeah, let's go down to 100. One hundred is dead center of the dial here. Right where the red line is. Yeah, where's my pickup coil? Can we can we just fish it out of here? clip right on the right on the actual wire first. I'm going to clip, believe it or not, on the insulation there. Hey, where is it? That, that should put a nice strong signal at 100. 
Okay, we'll go right on the wire here. What's the story? What's what's happening? These are some of my favorite moments in the shop. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in this state, state of confusion. What is going on? You know what? Maybe because I got this, maybe I should have this here. No difference. was coming out of this radio. Okay, I'm doing something dumb here, no doubt about it. We're in the middle of the FM band, for sure. It's 100 megahertz tuning on the SDR. The SDR antenna is connected to the output of the signal generator just via the center conductors. Okay, I will, I will ground... What was that? I'll put a ground on it. Come on, really? What? What is going on? Oh, I know what's going on. Okay, you know, Mr. Yeah. This is an experimental video. What I've forgotten is when I move up above 30, 40 megahertz on this SDR radio, I need to switch a couple of things here. I forgot this. So we'll switch those couple of things. So jumping between the 10.7 and 100 megahertz, not easy with this radio. I have to switch antennas and I have to switch the processing routines that are being used in here. So let's do it. We'll, we'll do it once. We'll get this thing set. So out comes the antenna connection. Now you know what? I've got this connected, hyper-connected here. Let's, let's de-hyper it. And we'll just go... so we're not listening to it. Now you get to watch a little SDR action here. So first we have to stop stop it. Call up this box. Change this from direct sampling Q branch to quadrature sampling. Close it. Move the antenna now on this one from the HF spot over to the... It says UV, but I'd say UHF everything above 50 megahertz or so. Okay, start her up again, hope it goes. And look at that. There we are, okay. I'm learning, what can I say, huh? I'm learning. <laughs> uh, I'm like a pioneer here, so I'm... Uh, here in the middle of the winter. So now we can tune this thing to exactly 100 and then leave it there. So I will do that. Wow, hair trigger. Okay, so the SDR says there's a signal at 100. Wobulate it, and you see it's now no longer at 100, it's, it's broadened out. And we're going to leave it unwobulated there, unmodulated. With it at 100, what happens on this transistor radio? Let's see. Oop, camera kind of t 
Egypt. That God wants to change you through His Word. It's not about head knowledge. Hard to tell, but I would say for this radio to pick up 100, it needs to be dialed to 100.1. And you know, I've had other experiences with this radio that kind of match that. So the main thing is, this guy is tuned to 100. And just just take a look at the uh, setting. It's absolutely precise. So now it's it's a hair. Just move it a hair either way, and that signal moves. But for eyeball purposes, it's really very accurate. So we know for sure we're putting a 100 into this radio. So now we'll switch the SDR back to watching what's coming out of the coming out of the IF. If I can do that. Click lead. I gotta do a lot of switching here. So I won't even connect it. He says connecting it. So we're still seeing the FM uh, signal coming from the uh, signal generator. It's pretty strong, and you know, I mean, it's being picked up by this little transistor radio just off its antenna. So, but now I'm gonna have to switch this back. Stop. Call. Q branch, not the I branch. Close. Switch, switch in inputs here. Someday I'll actually align this radio, and I'm, I'm sure I'll get there someday. But <laughs> may not be today. <laughs> not at this rate. Okay. And play. Okay, we're still tuned to 100 megahertz, but not really anymore because of the frequency uh, shifting inside this. Uh, I don't know what we're actually seeing, but if we go down to 10, 10.7, it's way over here at the right. Let's move it towards the middle. Put this back to 10.7, it doesn't go on its own. Whoops. What happened there? Shoved it back over. Oh, you crazy radio. Okay, well, never mind, never mind the tuning of the SDR. I'll just move the center screen. Okay, so the 10.7 is right here. And you can see something. Uh, just to the left of it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, tune the local oscillator until until we see 10.7 here. That means the local oscillator should be at 110.7. Let's go look. I, I gotta go look. I'm gonna switch this whole thing again. It's a bit of a hassle doing this. Oh, stop it first. Quadrature, antenna change. It'd be nice to arrange a little antenna switch on this, wouldn't it? But I certainly don't want to be plugging and plugging this in over and over. Maybe I can come up with some way to some kind of switch deal here. Once I, you know, this is just sitting on my bench. I haven't even permanently put it anywhere. Let's see what we get now. Okay, we go down to we go up to uh, 100. Oh. 
Yeah, 110.7. That's, that's where this is. 110.695. And I bet you I don't have quite on the money here. Step size. 1 hertz. Let's, let's bring the red line over so it's right on. Oh, look at that. It lines up perfectly. Okay, hey, everything made sense. So now I know I have the radio receiving at 100 megacycles. I know the IF is running at 10.7. And I know the local oscillator is where it should be. 110.7. The only thing that can be wrong is the dial. Where is the dial? That's probably not true. I'm probably jumping to conclusions, but it sure sounds nice right now. So the dial is actually 98, 99, 100, one, it's actually almost 102. Actually, you see those little markers that are actually raised where they fit the number. 98, 99, 100. Way off. It's way off, but I know the radio is receiving 100. And... <laughs> okay, I think, I'm, I think I've thought myself to death here already this morning. Should I just leave everything just as it is and uh, come back tomorrow morning, carry on from here? What would I do? Let me think. What's the next step? What is the next step? The next step would be to go back and look at the shape of the uh, IF, tune the uh, slugs, see if we can't change the shape of the IF. Why, why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? I, I think I can do that. Okay, let's stop. Change. Q branch. If I sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't be fooled. Okay, don't be fooled. <laughs> Switch antennas. It has to do with the signal processing techniques that are used in the uh, computer. Of course, it's all mathematical. It's uh, fast Fourier transforms and things like that happening in there. And that's where this I and Q thing is coming from, I believe. Don't quote me. So now we would be looking at the IF. That's where we're connected. We should see, as soon as I hit go, uh, I was hoping to see something a little stronger there. Now, without changing the anything, because I don't want to change anything now, I'll just increase, I'll, I'll just turn on the uh, wobulation over here. For sure, there it is. Look at that, it's right on 10.7. Fantastic, we're, we're cooking. Now, why do I not have as clean, clear a signal as I had before? Why, why is it... Why is it... Uh, why is it looking the way it's looking exactly? I mean, I, I can see the IF in there amongst all that junk. How can I strengthen this? Uh, I will try putting a ground from the antenna, the antenna connection here. So I'm grounded. I'll try grounding it to the chassis. Maybe that'll amp up the signal a little bit. Hey, that, 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 that helped. Okay, still got the funny noise stuff off to the right, which we don't know what that is, but I got a nice clear view. I do this, that turns on the gray. Must, must, have, must have, what did it do to the radio? That thing's changed a bit there. I mean, just probably cause it to shift. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Don't see what happened. But anyway, looking within the IF, I now see a really flat-topped flat -topped signal through there. 
Let's increase the wobulation. Oh, not so good now. Shrink it down. Now we should have it flat out to about a hundred either side. Most importantly, out to 75 kilohertz either side of 10.7. Why does it change shape so much? If you could just make it bigger, it would stay just that way. But as I make it bigger, it drops down, starts curving. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's really terrible. It seems to have gotten above 10.8 before it got below 10.6. That's a little weird. I could see this just a little bit clearer. Uh, I think I can boost the signal. I can boost the signal into the radio because right now it's actually it's actually not much. Let me boost the signal just by uh, moving this wire closer here. It's a little bit better. What if I actually touch it? It's not bad. Let's do that. Actually got the signal generator actually connected directly to the antenna now. Now that's pretty darn clear. I like that. Oop, what did I do there? What did I do? Is there an untold story back here? What's going on? Yeah, the untold story is that I'm using the wrong wire here. This is <laughs> this is the lead to my shop antenna. This is the lead to the radio. That's what was going on there. Get these closer. Okay, so now the signal generator is like it was never. It was never actually connected to the radio. I just. I just. I just. I just. I just accidentally connected it to my internal FM antenna thinking it was the radio. You know, that's really good. I think we can really work with that. that that's, a thing of, that's a thing of beauty. It seems to be shifted off to the right a bit. And we can check for the centering of everything by just turning that down. See, it is off. It's off to the right. Who's off to the right? Who, who is drifted? Who did it? Could be a local oscillator in here. Could be equipment here. Somebody did it. So I'm pretty sure it has to be the local oscillator here. Why am I sure of that? No, you know, there's no reason to be sure of that. I'm not going to really try anything here much, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll leave it just as it is. Leave everything as it is. Turn up Mr. Wobulator way up, way up. So I think we are now looking at the IF curve. That's what I think we're looking at. Should be flat, mostly flat through the gray zone and then rolling off afterwards. Okay man, I can't go this far without diddling with the screwdriver. Apparently I needed to drop a bunch of stuff on the floor too at this point. Okay, now. We're going to start with the bottom coil on the first IF. Get in there. These are painted in place too, which is okay. Survive that. No, this one doesn't feel like it's painted. Turning now. Is 
back the other way. You see something off to the left. Not working with much here, aren't we? Let me turn down the modulation a little bit. uncomfortable feeling about this whole thing. Nothing new in that. I will try the lower one. I mean, I could just always revert back to, you know, 10.7, shove through, use a voltmeter. This one was, this one was stuck. Over to the right. Over to the left. These are mistuned, they're not by much. I'm going to try to get to the upper one here. Okay. A little radio. I thought I'd whack my head with a microphone at this point. Anything might help. Here we go. Over to the right. Oh, this is flattening it out. Okay. Let's turn down the level. No, I turned up the level, in fact. Okay, and then we'll do the top of the other. To the left a little bit, I think. Now, see, this one might be disturbed, because this is when I've got the uh, radio connected right to. I really should stay away from the second transformer figure out a better way. Let's go back to the first one. Because I'm looking at the first transformer through the effects of the second one. That's not the best way to do it either. To the right, to the left, back in the middle. This might be hard to perceive if you're watching this. Well, I'm the one turning the screwdriver so I have a huge advantage here of Becoming sensitive to pretty minor changes in there. So here we go. This kind of went down. Oh, look at that. Should probably be listening to this thing. should it sound like? That looks to me like the highest and most centered spot. I don't think it made any difference to the IF alignment after all this effort. If I did anything, it's just minor, minor tweaking. Uh, but let's, let's listen to this radio now. In order to do that, I need to simply tune it off where it is. Say goodbye to the settings here. And I should probably hook it up to my inside shop antenna.
killed it. Okay, let me disconnect the SDR antenna connection in case that's Yeah, see how much difference I made? So. Seems to sound a lot better. Figure that out. <laughs> That's the wobulator. Some stronger stations down here. Sounds pretty good. Out, it was it was pitted in there. Okay. When it's the end of the car and it's time to say goodbye, donate it to Kidney Car. Over 20 years strong, towing is fast and free. You'll get a valuable tax receipt, minimum $300, and your donation helps the Kidney Foundation of Canada support one in ten Canadians living with kidney disease in your community. Ask your dealer or mechanic about Kidney Car or visit kidneycar.com. Kidney car. This is 91.5. That felt like a street fight. <laughs> and then what they did was they turned it around and made it between us and our fans, or we're taking that. Showing a 93. Away. So they so. turned the whole they turned the whole issue on its head. Metallica, these greedy rocks. But, rock but the sound quality is actually much better. We like to control what we do, and you know we want to give our music. A I don't know. <laughs> I really didn't think I did anything after all that monkey business but you know this is experimental learning here I'm just learning by trying trying to figure out how to best utilize this SDR uh, because I, I really believe in its potential at this point and uh, so it's a bit of a rough go getting through here but hmm now on the FM side there still is the discriminator adjustment which is the one I thought was causing the poor sound distorted sort of sound so we still have that to do and I got the whole front end of the radio both AM and FM to go over now once I'm really sure about how to set the uh, local oscillator which I am pretty sure now that the way to set it is not to look at the dial but to actually set it to its proper frequency uh, by using the SDR radio to monitor it okay beat myself silly here but I think that's what it takes that's what it's going to take to get this uh, to where it needs to be I need a good beating so thanks so much for watching See you in the next video.